As you know, Keith, after helping Lance out with his cut, went on to work on his homework and Lance went to go and listen to some music. Now, of course, 10 minutes later, Lance is getting a little bit interested of what Keith is doing on his computer. What is he working on? What does he have to do? All the questions that, of course, will run through somebody's mind, or at least Lance's mind. Let's see what's going to happen on this next episode. And welcome back, my friends, to Clint's Theater Ah You. So, hmm, what? Okay, no, Keith, we're not going to write that. We have to, we have to write it better. And, no, okay. Hi. I am Keith Cogain. And today, I am here to navigate you through the mythical world of literature. Did you get that? Uh, give it a second. No. Nah. Hmm. Lit to literature with. There we go. Thank you, autocorrect. The with what the themes of Macbeth or or um with the story of Macbeth. That sounds dry as hell. Well, how about we do it over again? It'll sound better if we do. Okay, okay, but. Um, what ideas do you have a better? Tons of them. Like, not saying, Hi, I'm Keith Cogain, and here's your dry one-hour lesson all about this play slash book. Ugh. Well, at least, unlike some other kids, we're not, like, thug-noting it or, you know, I don't know, cheating or doing cliff notes. I swear to God, that makes me instantly better than all other kids. Why are we even... Dude, you know you can't type and think about something else at the same exact time. It just doesn't work that way. Okay, okay, okay. Look, chill. Relax and just keep going. Okay? Don't be so dry and don't be like, I am your English teacher and I am going to teach you. A thousand fun facts about Macbeth and read you the whole entire story. You have to be like, hey, I'm your cool English teacher. And today we're going on a journey to see everything through Macbeth. Now, follow me and I'll be your tour guide basically through this whole entire crazy ride of an essay. You have to be upbeat, elaborate, a little more energetic. You know, you have to be out there. You have to be gauging. Jesus Christ, is that all we got from learning from Lance? Dude, hell, I've only known him for two days. But, yeah, it is right. I have to be a lot more, well, how do I say this? Um, Not energetic, but, but what? Uh, it, I swear it starts with a, a C. I don't know. Charismatic. Yes, charismatic. I have to have charisma like he does. I need to sell it. I need to sell it like I really loved the book. I mean, I did. It was a good book. But I need to sell, sell it to everybody. To the people, you know? Macbeth is Macbeth to them. But it's so much more to us. Dude, that's right, Keith. That's right, Keith. Sell it like that. Have charisma. Do the things that Lance kind of does. You know, don't make a, well, you know, professional BS paper. Because... I would not want to have that on my record before college. But anyway, it's right. It's true. And at least I've already got this in MLA format. But we all know that MLA format will never be enough to get me that A. I need to get an A by coming through. Not only with the facts, but presenting more than that. Presenting more than just my understanding or my overall wild knowledge on it. 
I, I have to be charismatic. I have to guide them through this. I have to use similes and also use tons of phrasing and things that will make this, if they come to life, yes. Okay. Hi. I'm Keith Kogang. Keith Kogang. And in this journey of ours, ah, uh, gosh, okay, journey, we will be finding, okay, yeah, finding the key aspects of what made and still makes the literature from that time oh literary okay literature literature from that time period from that age from the renaissance from the age of the renaissance Ren Asans. So fascinating. And different. We will pull out the key de details on why today in our modern. Ma Dern world, we still uphold and praise these works of art from, from its many aesthetics it's created. And, oh God, aesthetics. Aesthetics it has created and many more. This okay, this is the effect classic literature has had on the world. Classic literature Ugh, dude, has had on the world. Why won't you spell literature? Hmm. I wonder what he's writing about. You know, the way that Keith is just intently and like intensely just like looking at his computer and typing. I, I could reckon that he's hell of a precedent about whatever homework and schoolwork he's working on. From the looks of it, it's an essay, but when you could really just zone in on who he is and hone in on what he's doing, to him, it's just so much more. I mean, what is happening inside that head of his? What does he have? What kind of secrets does he have locked away? The way that Keith looks at his computer, it's like he's in love. In love with the writing this, in love with whatever he's doing. He's, he's absolutely in love with what he's writing about. And though he has such a blink expression on his face, from the way he's just typing, from the way he just is. I think he, you can tell. He's doing something very important to him. And I hate to bother, and I shouldn't. I really, I really shouldn't. I mean, look at him. Look at him go. He just tick-tack, tick-tack. Tick, 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 tick. He just he keeps writing over and over, and, and more and more. And the editing, and 
He just, he's got this whole entire flow going on. He's moving at the speed of light, but he doesn't even feel it because he thinks time is just moving so slowly. He doesn't realize his fingers are just moving so fast. His brain is moving so fast. He's like in this place, in this state of mind where the world is just slowly rotating and he can feel the earth's rotation and feel the tension between the tectonic plates and gravity, which keeps us down. He's like in this world, a world transformed, if you know what I mean. It's so interesting and so intriguing just to keep watching him. I think I could watch him type like this for days. I'm not kidding. The way he moves, the subtle little movements on his face and those little quick expressions, the way he gestures, the way his hair looks as his hands are moving, the hand-eye coordination, it's all brought together. It's something that you've never seen before. It's something that you need to see in your everyday life, but you know, you don't. It's some, it's some type of passion that you just, you want to recreate, but you just, you can't. If you know what I mean, whatever he's doing, it's just so darn important to him. And I kind of love that. I mean, a man, a woman, a person in general knows what they want in life. He's going for it. He knows what they love. Now that, that's the type of person you want to be with. That's the type of person who becomes an innovator. That's the type of person who has some gift deep down inside and has truly unlocked it, but needs to start unlocking it to the world. His point of view needs to be shared with us. And I'm not going to lie, I'm really honored to just be in his presence, watching this in this moment. You know, as an actor, I know that acting in theater would be nothing. Our dramatics, our angst, our character trips would all be nothing without writing, without the authors, without the people who made those books without the people who made them into playwrights without the people who put on the production behind the show which he's a part of when it all comes together with the orchestra and the music and thunderous applause comes upon us that's when the best moments are born that is when geniuses are created that is when we live to see our name farther than in the lights, but in the stars, on the moon, throughout many galaxies and solar systems and universes. That is the moment where we know in life we are meant to make it. We are meant to go farther. We are meant to go farther on through life. It is those moments where we voyage and venture past where they've told us to never go, places we've never gone before, breaking limits, that they say we never should have. It is those moments where we prove them wrong and we show them that life is limitless and limitlessness is everything. Everything is everything in life. They always have told us that. So why don't we do that? Why don't we physically always embody that? Why aren't we being that? And I think the biggest thing of this whole entire maturity junk, if anything, is definitely to embody that. And do that in every single moment and second of my life. I used to waste life kidding around about people like Jessica and clowning around and being so mad about them in little annoying ways. I used to let the smallest things get under my skin. But now, looking at this kid, I know. I know where my presence lies. I know where my commitment lies. I know that life is very long but it goes very quickly it goes very fast and that jessica's ass will never be worth it for moments there i can just have these thoughts he's shown me that he's shown me so much in just a few quick seconds and it's glorious it's beautiful there's something about it that's so magnetic just like his energy just like the way he is He's got that. He's truly got that. And I love to see the fact that he's just so pulled 
into what he's doing. I shouldn't interrupt that. My gosh, this is so annoying. I know I can get this right. I know I can do better. Just why, why? It, it's good, it's good. Don't, don't get me wrong, but still, there's, some, there's so much more missing. Uh, sometimes it just, it gives me a headache looking at this computer. For a second, let's not even think about the blue light. Let's just think about the thinking process. Am I overthinking this? Am I underthinking this? I always overthink like this. And I know it. And, oh, it just, it sucks so much when I, I know I'm on to something. I know I'm on to something. I swear I am. I, I know I am. I just, I need to take it farther. I need to think it do more. Maybe I need to draft. Maybe I need to just write. We can edit when it's all over, but God, this is so annoying. I strongly dislike when this happens. I know I have this. I know I've got this, but still. Oh, I, I can do this. I can do this. I know that. But God, some days you feel like you're just trapped in your own world and you can't get out and you just, you want to. And you need that freedom of expression. You need something that can make you rise up against your own oppression inside your head before you can rise up against the oppression of the whole entire world. And that's what art is. That's, that's a form of it. Maybe these are what these stories are, but God, I need to think on this. And I need to do more than just sleep on this. I have to draft. I have to meticulously draft. I, I have to think about this. I have to do this with skill. I have to do this with precision. I... I need time. I need I need patience for myself. I need hours. I need coffee. I need Starbucks music, maybe. I need cafe music. I need lofi. I need chill music. I need I need whatever I need. I I need to fully, fully immerse myself in the status of what is classic literature. What is this art form? This lost art. I need to know. I need for the answers to be here. I know they're here. I know they're here. I can feel them. I can feel them. I, I can feel them. Just calm down, Keith. You can take a break. Just calm down. Just calm down. Deep breaths. I know I can do this. I know I can find it. I know I can find it. I I know I can find it. Okay, okay, but just don't stress yourself out. Find it. Find it. Breathe in. Breathe out. Sometimes this can just be so annoying. But you need to find your cool. Find your cool, Keith. Find your cool. Find your cool. Find your cool. Find your cool. You can do this. Find your cool. Find your cool. I know you can do this. Find your cool. Find your cool. You can do this. Breathe in. Breathe out. God, I know it's annoying. I know you're frustrated. Breathe in. Breathe out. You need to take a break. No, you need to take a break. You can take a break. You can come back. You can write. It's your given gift. Use your talent. You know you can. Let go. I know he's in this state of energetic jeopardy. I know he's in this state of flowing, in the state of filling. I know that, that that electricity in his brain, it's moving through all of him. And it's bursting at the seams of his fingertips. But something seems a little off. 
it's not him it's not him himself it's just he's stressed out and i just i can't help but wonder why is he so stressed out what is he writing on his computer i just as a fellow artist and human being i i feel this hunger this hunger to let him push forward but yet this knowing that i know that he can't and not that he can't but it's not good for him i have this thing this tingling in the back of my head something that i know is my intuition telling me that he's got this in the bag but he's overthinking and like he said he needs a break and i can i can feel that and likewise as in human nature all humans ponder things all humans have to know the answers and we want to know all the answers it's this curiosity that can save but yet kills and that's the thing they always say that curiosity kills the cat but that curiosity can heal that all is broken and wounded they tell us that innovation it takes one curious mind to go out there and find it to find the world that we need to be the world that we need in us here what we need is in our future and what we have and all we have is what we need. And all we have is our past and our present. But our future means more of it in different ways. Sometimes it is overcoming fears of our own places. Not only in society, but in our heads. And I can feel deeper than ever that Keith needs that. He's missing a puzzle to put together his key, to unlock the door on where he needs to be in society. He's looking for somebody like you, for somebody like me, and for somebody like us, for somebody like everyone here. Just like we are looking for him likewise too, to show him where that puzzle piece is, to be the missing piece to the puzzle, the perfect match. Someone that can help them not really just hone their talents and cultivate their abilities and their creativity. Somebody who can truly guide them and help them find their place in our human race or in our society. We don't all have to be humans to struggle. We don't all have to be people to struggle we just struggle. And struggling is just surviving. Holding on is just surviving. Flying is thriving. And if we're looking to thrive, we have to understand the past, to understand our current, to understand our future. He understands that. He knows that. So if I ask him what's going on, I don't think it would be that bad. I think it would help him, liberate him. Giving something that he didn't know before, that he didn't see before. Give him a little knowledge. I know it sounds crazy, but crazy mature. But I know Keith needs somebody in his life like that. I know that because I need somebody in my life like that. We all do. So why ponder at this question out of curiosity? I still know. I must ask. I must ask him. Why? And why is that? Hey, Keith. What's so annoying? <laughs> Do you think I could provide any help to you? I'm here, so I'm willing and very open to helping you. Seriously, the offer is my honor. <gasps> huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Lance, uh, oh. Um, sorry, I, I, not really sorry, but 
I apologize. I only heard the last of what you said because I was just so stuck in my brain. I was trying to get out of my brain, but um, yeah. Uh, what what were you offering? But were you offering again? Uh, seriously, Keith. No need to be sorry. I was just offering you my help, extending a hand. I can tell that whatever you're cultivating over there in your writing is very important to you, and you said you were getting annoyed and that this was hard, so of course I want to, one artist from another, give you a helping hand. Oh, um, oh, thanks, Lance. That's super, super thoughtful. Not many people have, um, done or really said that to me or others in general before, I mean, they probably have, but I, I mean, I guess not tons of people. Hmm? You act so surprised. Well, this is a moment to be cherished. Where I come from, when I was younger, I got bullied a lot. Oh, I see. Yeah, so when somebody offers help to me, I see it as a gift, um, you know, morally, it is all of our responsibility to always help out people in need and to be a nice person and to know when to cut our lines and draw our boundaries, but do help the community out. But I know that where I come from, back in that area of Texas, it was live or die, or survive on your own. I mean, it's an overall thing that on many Texans believe or buy into and not as you know entire general state but there are people who would live and die the Texas way and it's not really Texas there are just people who are survival of the thinnest they don't get that you need to help people yeah you always need to help people to survive because if you can't survive together, then you can't even thrive together. Yeah. How'd you know? That's my favorite quote. Well. Yeah. 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 Well, um, you see, Lance, I have this stupid, well, it's not stupid, it's not stupid, I'm just calling it stupid because I'm annoyed and I'm annoyed at myself, and that's why I call it such stupid, but I have this book project I have to work on for ELA, and it's really, really good, trust me, I, I know what I'm doing for this essay, I'm typing, I'm typing, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm giving it my literal all, and I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I'm just I'm not quite there yet and it's just it's more than a little frustrating it's more than just annoying I'm just I feel so angry because I feel like it's infuriating me and it, it just I feel lower in the ranks of myself than ever just because of one one little you know essay and I put my heart and soul into everything basically I do with it and it's just it's something near and dear to my heart because I I truly grasp the concept I I understand it fully I I know what it is and you know I can nonchalantly say oh well I'm just working on this project but I can't really I mean I could but it just it wouldn't feel right in my soul because that's not really it I'm just I'm confused, and I haven't really hit a roadblock. I just have lack of better use for wording. My vocabulary is high enough to do this, but yet it isn't sharp or quick enough, maybe today, to help me. And it could help me. It has helped me. But still, it's just tiring. Tiring that I know what I want to do. And I know how to do it in my soul. But that, it just, it, it 
won't sometimes all get down on paper. Have you ever been there before? Because I definitely have. I'm here right now. <laughs> Keith. Yeah, Lance? Believe it or not, I know what you mean. I've been there. You have. Yeah, of course I have. What do you mean? I mean, I'm not perfect, Keith. Come on, I'm an actor. I'm an artist. I know what it's like to um go in on things and that they don't always go as planned. I know what it's like to have this idea and this concept in your head and know how to use it and fully execute it. You know, have the words all planned out and not have everything inside of it, in it, to be completely satisfied with it. Gratification to the, to the gods or to the world that we live in is very important. I, I understand it, but sometimes showing gratitude to life is so hard when you show gratitude to life in in what you do. And in retrospect, I guess for me, every time I act and go over lines, I want to make sure I'm always doing it the right way, correctly. Sometimes I can overthink it, and then sometimes I'm overthinking it, but I know I have to come back to it later. Trust me, I know what you feel like. I know how you feel. I've been there. I've been there a million times before. And it's annoying beyond the doubts of life in thus far, far thus far. But I can help you. I can. So what book or um, play, I, I guess, um, are you working on? Thanks, Lance. I, um, I really appreciate that. An artist to another artist. It's what we need in this world. It is what we need in this world. I also want to say, my Keith, you've always been stupid deep before. Not stupid as in dumb. But I mean, you've always been more mature than you give yourself credit for, or others do. If you're taking some vow of maturity thing because of me or whatever, you don't really need to. You just have to be you. Being is the most mature thing you can do. So I mean, I guess in a way you are. <laughs> but also in a way you aren't. Because everything is everything. I'm just saying, man, you're already more more mature than those other kids. And the grade above and below and, and the grade with you. Yeah? And what? What about it? Give yourself more credit for it. Your eyes beyond your ears. Don't give out on your inklings all the time. Your intuition's strong. And it's helping me right now and right here. Okay, Keith. So anyway. <laughs> what's the book? So oh, anyway, Lance, I'm working on Macbeth. What the fu- What? He's working on that cursed- I- As an artist, I understand. It's beautiful. As an actor, I know more. I know more about that. And- And I am terrified. And as a friend- Not only to him, but- Also- a person who has more responsibility 
I know I need to look out not only for him, but for all of us. So what the hell? Okay, okay, okay. Remember your training. Just do what you do. Do what you need to do. What? Why is he taking me by the... Well, the arm. Not really the hand. I'm super confused. I mean, seriously. Dude, I, I thought we were cool or something. And, and now all of a sudden he's like dragging me by the arm what did i do what did i say uh, i mean like it, it clearly seems like i i did something to offend him or at least upset him i never think i see this i don't know darker not vile but kind of more fester and poisonous side of lands like i never thought i'd see him such an, well, what do I say? Such a, a drive to, to, to get me out of here. Like, he's in some type of physical pain, but he's not. It's, it's weird. You know, I don't know. Like, one second we're cool, I have his approval, next second... He falls down, but I just help him up. Two seconds later, we're talking, have a really deep discussion and conversation, and then all of a sudden, you know, I say something wrong. Like, what did I, what did I say wrong? All I said was Nick Beth, and then he just flew off the handle or something. I mean, what did I do? What did I seriously do to offend him? I don't, I don't get it. Like, Macbeth, look, I get that I called it boring from the beginning, but you, he went back and I went back to, to literally go back and emphasize on, oh, it's not boring and duh, I know it's not boring. I'm just annoyed at it. And now all of a sudden he's just, I don't know. He's like on me and I don't get it. I mean, what did I do wrong? I, I just, I mean, I care now. So I, I, I legitimately want to know what social cue did I miss? Did I really do anything wrong? Okay, okay, okay. Calm down. Breathe easy, Lance. Breathe, 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 breathe. Breathe easy. Breathe easy. He just, okay, he said the word. Now we gotta do it. Now we gotta do it. Okay, he's writing about that stuff, and he's writing about it in here, in the theater, in this sacred place for us, and see, the biggest thing now for us is that, well, the problem is he's just so darn passionate. He's so blessed passionate. And that's a really great thing. Being passionate with this in the theater is not such a amazing thing. I, I just, I need him, duh. We need to get out of here so then we can help everybody, so then I can help him, so then, so then we don't have to freak out anymore. I mean, look, I know some people just say it's a superstition, but, but still, I... It gets me on pins and needles, puts me on edges. Sometimes it just messes with my own general anxiety when things are characteristically out of aesthetic or something. And I, I don't know. Even superstitions get me sometimes. You know, it it becomes to the point where I just I get overwhelmed and I freak out. But still, uh, it's just... 
I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, 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 I just, I, I physically know that in these moments, you just, you feel it, you feel the need, do it, you, you go, you, you do everything that, that you have to do, and then you just, you're done, you're out of it, it's, it's just like, it's the snap focus, it's like what Keith was doing, this, this pure flow that he had, this movement, this everything, everything that he absolutely put into that work i mean it works for him but in the theater it just can never be so and too careful and i want to make sure nobody gets hurt and everybody's okay and the best way to do that is to reverse this and the even better to make him aware of what we're doing and to show compassion of course of course like always like we always need to do, but mainly, well, mainly guys, girls, I don't know, you house people up in my head. Our main goal here is to make sure that Keith knows that it wasn't really him and that Nobody else gets hurt and this whole thing comes to a close and a journey and we don't have some crazy battle in case. We don't need to go to court for this. It's just It's something that needs to be done, you know. I just just don't panic. Just don't panic. Lance, seriously, where are you taking me? What are we doing? Is any of this even necessary? Yes, of course it is. Now follow me. Come on, let's keep going. But seriously, what are we even doing? Can't, can't you tell me what we're doing? I mean, no, you can't know yet until we get there. But, 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 we're almost there. So, but you zip your lips and... Oh, oh fine. But still, I want to know what we're doing. Boom. There. We're in. Okay. Yeah, happy? Now tell me. You do understand that you can't just take people around random places and then not tell them what you're doing, right? Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Whatever. <sighs> I'll, I'll just... I'll tell, you, I'll tell you right now. Look, all I want you to do is just reverse the simple course. It's real plain and simple. Wait, what? You, you want me to do what now? We, you, you reverse a curse. Where's this curse stuff coming from? And what the fuck do you mean by that? And also, why? And also, seriously, Lance, you believe in sus superstitions? I mean, come on. I love you, man. But really? You're going to let things like this get into your head? And you pulled me all the way out of here. From the back room. From doing homework. For this? For superstition? Oh, you better have a good reason. I do. Okay, Keith? I swear. Fine, fine. Tell me how it goes. Okay, good. Well then, now, turn around three times and spit on the floor. What? You're crazy. Why me? Why do I have to do this? What did I do? You said the word. Now, you pay the price. What word? The M word? What word? What do you mean? Were you referring to my... Don't you dare say it again, because if you do, we're going to have to do it twice, which means you might have to look like an idiot twice. And I know and that's what you're thinking in your head. And no, Keith, you're not an idiot. So please, 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 let's just do it. But I d But you said the N word. But, 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 that's not fair, okay? I put up with so many, so, so much weird stuff in my life 
but this, this Lance, okay, Lance, I just, I don't know. I don't feel like I feel comfortable with doing such thing. Well, get comfortable because you're doing it. But Oh, and would you look at that, Keith? It's already raining outside. So you better just, okay, 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 Lance, I'll do it. Just please tell me what we're doing. Okay, well, let's first. <sighs> the witches in Shakespeare's plays use oral can incantations, right? Yes, they do. Fun fact. All of those oral incantations are actually real. What? They're not fake. They're all ones that he found in a couple very, very disturbing books. Which is why whenever you write them or even say them or slightly think about them around or in the theater. And I mean like in close proximity about a foot away or two feet away or in the literal theater, you will get cursed and you will curse the current play or art that the theater is hosting. And also, that curse can hurt people. You got it? Okay. Okay, I got it. In order to reverse the course, you'll have to spin three times and then spit on the floor. Wait, what? You want me to what? Please, it's not that hard. Spin three times and spit onto the floor. Keith, I know you got this. Please don't be dramatic. I just, what? You just what? Come on, dude. Do you want to versus Chris or not? Lance, I just... What, are you slightly annoyed that you didn't know that? Look, not a lot of people know that. And yes, 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 witches probably do exist. There are a lot of creepy books out there that you might never be the same after you've read or have read. And no, I didn't find this on some half-sided old Wikipedia page. No, these were written down in actual books and 101 facts about Shakespeare books and no they didn't either they cited their credited material and yeah let's just say it was in a few margins of notes within the play itself that was discovered by some old philosophers and they put it down and some other people translated it from old English which wasn't too too hard from the Renaissance period and then you know, they just, they kept it. But that is not the point, dude. You gotta do this. You gotta do this. Okay, okay. I, I hear you and I get you. Oh, yeah, but here comes the butt. Well, okay, but Lance. That could be just some superstition and well some superstitions hold a lot of truth as old tales okay yeah you have a point and a lot of them have warnings in them but still like that could have been a half-sided book from that book could have been full of half-sided articles that came from total nut jobs and people who are conspiracy See, theorist, as I said, and I don't know. Look, even if it's not a superstition, I think this is just a bit of a reach, man. And I mean, okay, it definitely could have happened. It was the Renaissance era, and we don't, we, we don't, we have no I fucking deal what happened. I I exactly. We don't. Which is why, yeah, but still, I feel like, Maybe this is a little much. Like, okay, fun. You you could have treated me nicely and, well, nicer and just, like, 
asked me to get up and you wouldn't get up if I asked you to. You don't know, maybe I would. Mm. Really, Keith? You think that? Okay, okay, Lance, I, I know that's the truth. I probably wouldn't get up. But still, you didn't have to, what, shove you here? Yeah, well, the curse doesn't reverse itself unless we do it quickly. So chop, chop. Well, look, I just, I don't want to be that person, but I feel like, dude, okay, maybe you're overreacting. And no, you're not really overreacting, but I think maybe we're believing too much into this little half-sided truth, possibly. Look, if you want to see if it's half-sided or not, you can go and check out the book. I still have it. Oh, well, um, I thought, yeah, you thought I made it up. Of course you did. Something quick off of my writ to save and protect my reputation of being reliable. I get it. I also get the fact that you think that this is a bit of a reach and that this is a superstition, but truth is what we make of it, Keith. We don't know what is true or not, so why don't we just do it? Lance, I, I love you, but still, don't you think this is going too far? It's not even that big of a deal. You're not doing too much. I'm not asking you to call upon some haunted spirit or ghost. You might be, if these are all real. Well, if we are, then make peace with the ghost. Duh. But why do you said the word? You have to do it. We talked about this, man. Okay, 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 okay. I mean, can't we just come to some agreement about this? Do, yes, you really have to do this. Really, I mean, I just... Ugh. Lance, I, I love you, but still, man, I don't know. I feel like this is a bit of a reach, and I don't feel why I should be so pulled and compelled to do this. Why even are you so pulled and compelled to do this? I mean, I just don't get it. Dude, this... I love you, but this is just all so crazy. And we could get in a lot of trouble with a lot of crazy nonsense. That is sense, but we don't understand. And I don't know. And we could the other way. So, okay, okay. That's a good point. But still, I just, I want to know why. I mean, I just, maybe if you clarify a bit more, I won't be as confused. Fair enough. Wait, oh, uh, I mean, I mean, well, A, you said maybe if you clarify, you could understand. Well, I did. So anyway, anyway. Please, okay, just please. Uh, huh? I'm sorry, Keith, okay? If I may have just confused you or scared you, but please, for the love of God, just do it. Just do it, okay? Some things you don't always have to know or even fully understand. Some things you just have to do because you know you have to do it. You know it's what's right. And... As far as it goes, for me, I understand that. I know I understand that. And I know deep down somewhere, you you understand that as well. So please, for the love of God, for the love of all things that are good and holy, anything divine, just please do it. Do it. Be a good friend. Be a good castmate. Be a good member. You're a nice guy, Keith. And look, that set piece design, I mean, from the artist to the actors, to the actress, to the backstage crew, to the lighting people on this crew, to the people who've moved the props, to the curtain hands, to the directors, to the head of the backstage crew, the head of the actors, and to the scouts who the guild 
made sure would come out to see this. From the teachers who have dedicated time to put all of their effort into this. From all the students who are looking to join something bigger than them. And to possibly not just find friends, but newfound family. For the orchestra members who will be scoring the whole entire thing for us. Seriously, for everyone, please. Okay, if not for you, not me, and for we, for all of us, we've worked so hard on this already. All of us. And while you may be newer here and you may have nothing to lose, all of us have dreams and aspirations. And some of us, like me, we really want to make this our career. We want this to go well because we need it to. Because we need to show that the arts are a viable way of living life. It's a, it's a way of making sure that we can have a job and that we can live life and that we can be who we want to be and not have to be bound by what society's old boundaries have been. We all want to live life limitless. And this play, in one way or another, helps us take one giant step and leap closer to that, Keith. So seriously. If not for you, if not for me, then for we, for all of us, because we've worked so hard. We've worked so hard to get to this place even before the play. There has been so much premeditation, so much work, so much time and effort, not only put into acting classes or classes on art, but in our everyday lives. Every second we have dedicated to just these moments, for the moment to arise, we're recognized for our talents, for our skills to make it to where we want to be in life. So please, if not for the sake of all of us, for the sake of the universe, for the greater good, just do it. Sometimes you don't always have to get something in return. Sometimes you don't always have to know what's coming next. Sometimes you just have to do it because you know that's what's right. And you know that that's correct. Sometimes you just gotta do it, Keith. Sometimes you just gotta do it. And you know what? If you want to know my real reason for caring so much about all of this, it's because I don't want people to get hurt. Maybe limbs may not be physically lost, but dreams, dreams may definitely be broken, Keith. And while you may not think that everybody's career is riding on your back because it's not. People's careers and their futures do definitely depend on you. So every single day, you make a new action. Think about the greater good. Not only just personal gain every single day. Yeah, personal gain, self-interest, those things are great. But we have to think about we before me because if there's no we then there is no me there's no us without I sure but without us I could have never existed without all of these amazing people who supported me in my dream my whole entire life without my parents without my family without my teachers and my classmates, and my fellow actors, actresses, and what is this, and acting. 
without people like you running the backstage crew for us, without our directors, without our writers, without our painstakingly prestigious artists who take time to do everything they can to help us out, even if they are reluctant at first. Without all of those people, we would be nowhere. I would be nowhere. So we have to thank them. We have to at least give them this and give the world so much more because it's for the greater good, Keith. And we don't have to just think about ourselves or this, that, and the other. So what? It's embarrassing in the moment. I'm the only one who's probably going to be seeing it. And guess what? If it gets caught in the security cams, do you think any janitor or anybody who watches the school security is going to be wondering, oh, what did this random kid do on this random day that is totally probably not that important to them in their head, huh? You're not going to embarrass yourself. The only way you're going to embarrass yourself is not being man enough or being woman enough or being a person enough or a human enough or a thing enough or a living creature enough to understand that sometimes you just do things because it's the right thing to do. And that you don't let others down because other people's lives, it very much depends on this and they can get hurt either way. So yeah, you may call it superstition. You may call me crazy. But I still know that I believe in this in my own way. And that we all make of life our own different truths. So, Keith, you could help us out today as an extra precaution. If the play goes well. Or you could be so darn embarrassed. You just walk away. Because you're so afraid of doing something that'll make you look stupid or doing something wrong that you'll run away like a coward. Mm, That is the only wrong answer. You can't run. You can't hide. All you can do is face the music. Face your life. Face your fears and live. So you just need to do it. And if not for me, not for all of them. Just for the frickin' universe. Do it for the good of something. Because this, this isn't all just personal interest here. Gods. <laughs> well, okay, to be honest, one, Lance is right. Even if I don't believe in this, this is for the greater good. And this isn't about being brave. This is about having moral courage. And he's just also so, so freaking adorable. And I mean, not really adorable. I just, I mean, hot. And I'm not hot. It's just, I don't know. I just, I do. It's just, I guess, before I met this kid, I, 
only ever really looked out for number one, you know? It was me in that home, there at the home, you know? With all the other boys looking out for number one. And that mainly was because no one was there for me, you know? And now he's there for me. All the other boys, they bullied me. They ganged up on me. Whenever the girls came over to, you know, do charity events with us and run things like that, they they talked bad about me, the boys did to the girls. I had no chance of making a friend. And not one single person in there that I could contact. All I had was me. A purple stuffed hippo. And one blanket left of not only my dad, not only a shred of dignity, not only a sliver of my old life, but a shed tear of all of my childhood gone. And I never had to not just look out for number one. Because I was never part of things. Not before. I mean, I used to be on a baseball team. And we used to talk about all that crap and shit when we were up going batting and we were playing. And I believed every piece of it. And after I turned nine, after my dad died, I started believing that stuff, that shit was garbage. But it turns out that it's not. That wasn't true. What's true is that your teammates are what's always going to help you survive. Your friends are what's always going to get you through. And in my head, I feel like If I was never the fuck up, my mother, she would have stayed. If I was never the fuck up, my mom would have stayed. And maybe she could have saved my dad that day. And if I was never the fuck up, maybe she would have came faster. Maybe the uh, government and the authorities, they would have seen some reason to get some good, humble, so wholesome child to a good, loving, caring foster family or any relative quickly and right away, very immediately. Not even a day would they hold them there. And that center before they get adopted. They always think if I wasn't the fuck up, then I would have friends today. But I'll tell you this, guys, friends, really, the only thing I've ever fucked up doing in life is closing myself off from them. It's putting myself in a shell. It's excluding myself away from other people because I always thought if I'm away from other people I can't fuck up and I can't fuck them up I don't have to be responsible for them I just I can look out for them you know they can look out for them and I can just look out for myself and it won't matter because they're far away and I wouldn't affect them I was just another person who was locked into the gravity of their friend groups and their social hierarchy. Just, you know, far, far removed, far, far away. Like I was just kept in place with this lunacy there. 
gravity meant the thickest atmosphere, thicker than Earth, yet land so buoyant you'd have no idea what to do with it. Some parts would be, would be frozen, shivered close. But just like that, on day one, when no one else has been able to make some connection to me, this random kid, this random kid over here, you help me remember that you need people to help you find your way. And when you have people who are counting on you, you can't just let them fall down on their back. You can't just give them up can't just turn around and leave. can't just desert them. You have to have their back. You have to catch them when they fall. And you gotta help them so they don't fall. You gotta lift people up in this world. Not tear them down. And you gotta run forward. Through the forest or through the arena. Right alliance. Distance makes the heart go fonder. And maybe I'm not a fuck up after all. Maybe I could just be one of those best teachers when it comes to teamwork and giving a hand. And after all this time, this one Cuban boy I fell for, who I basically called a pimp the other day, is making me all giddy inside. Which is why, of course, I have to do the right thing and have moral courage, not just bravery. Lance, you're right. I'll do it. I'll do it for you and everyone else. What do you do again? Turn around three times. Well, spin around three times and just spit on the floor. You got it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do. Thanks, man. For what? For reminding me what friendship is for and what life is. And I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, Keith, you can do this. One, okay, two, and three. This will make Lance happy for sure. Hey, you did it. Yeah, I did. Now, let's get kicking. I don't want to be caught by the janitor, seriously. Because he'll kill us if he saw that. Really, Keith? You think anybody's going to check on the security cameras? No, but, like, if he just walked right in and he saw it. Okay, yeah, you're right. That would be pretty awkward. But still, you did it. Yeah, I did. I did do it. Now, before anything else happens, let's just make our way out of here. I want to get 
caught or getting in trouble. Okay, I'm right behind you, buddy. Great. Let's see. Well, made it back to the dressing room. You know, I know we all hate to admit it, but Vance is right. I honestly don't know what to think of all of this anymore. Life is just starting to become some crazy, crazy war, and I don't know if I can keep up. It scares me, you know? It scares me to know that I just pushed people away. All for nothing. I just, I lost sight of everything. Because I got bullied, and that's not nothing, no. But I lost parts of me. I lost possible friendship. I lost not only parts of me, parts of my life. I, I lost my life. I somehow lost my everything in those years of that torture that they put me through at the home. <sighs> My gosh. It's just, without him thinking about it, without Lance, without anyone else, I wouldn't be here. That's you. Without Adam. And, you know, I come off as so aloof to all of them. And so, I guess, emo and edgy or something. I know I come off as just being rude or mean. And I don't mean to be. It's just. Sometimes I like to keep the space. Because when you keep the space, you don't have to deal with the problems with closeness. But when you keep the space, you have to deal with the fact that you might never have anyone. That this is all that there is for you. There's no going forward, no going back. It's just, it's you in this dark, dark void. And it sucks. Trust me, it does. I know, but it does. When I think about it now, when I, when I really, really think about it, when I think deeply about it, that's just right. There's no I without we, there's no we without us. I have to step it up. I, I have to step my game up. Point blank. We don't get anywhere without ourselves and without each other. So, maybe relationships can come at a pretty high valued price, but you can't really put a price tag on them, can you? Or can you with your trauma either? Life is life sucks in some ways it's not always going to be the best but when we reach out to people we ask for help and we listen to see what they have to say and we listen to others 
We truly hear and feel other people and their beings. We understand what they always meant. We always understand what they've always mean. It's just time to put that to the test. It really is. It's time for me to let go of that. It is time for me to let go of that. Hey, is that music? What am I hearing? That's so strange. Weird. I could talk. It's not coming from that way either. What is it? What is it? Hmm. I'm kind of curious now. Kind of got to know. What's making that sound? Those noises. What music is this? What type? Who's is it? Tingling warmer. It's definitely ahead of me, not behind me. Practice in soda there. Mm. Just keep looking. Just keep listening. Mm -hmm. Just, I'm really interested, super curious now to find what it is. What, what's doing that? What's making those sounds? Seriously. Where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? Key thing. Where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? Oh, oh, went to his earbuds. That's what happened. He must have taken them off or for, totally forgot about them when he dragged me out of the room. <laughs> I guess it explains that. I mean, Lance did say he was listening to music, and we found the music he was listening to. So, hmm. You know, I wonder what he's listening to. I wonder if I should try. Mm, nah, it's not his phone. It's his personal business. I shouldn't go. And plus, it's kind of disgusting and gross to share earbuds with somebody. Even if they were headphones, I still wouldn't do it. You know how much ear gets trapped up in there? You could get an infection. Don't want to do that. I mean, it's just about as sanitary as a little box. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. I mean, yeah, little boxes are pretty. Yeah, exactly. Which is why we shouldn't touch his phone. Especially because it's his own personal item. Trust me, you wouldn't want you on his phone. Like, nobody would want you on their phone. Or, like, you wouldn't want them on your phone. Going on people's phones without having permission granted to you. Yeah, that's a slippery slope that I will not slide down or go down or even think about going down. I just need to, you know, turn away, turn my back to it, turn a blind eye and just, just walk, you know. Because if, if I just walk, then I don't know what he's listening to. And then, well... Well, then, I don't even have to think about it, right? You know, I'm right. It's, like, wrong in so many ethical and moral ways. This is just so wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Just 
turn away. It's not like you're turning your back on him. I don't know, kind of. You may be interested, but still. <sighs> you know, look, if it was him and he invaded our privacy, if he, if he invaded our privacy, how do you think you would feel, Keith? Flattered or betrayed? In all honesty, because it's him, a little bit of both, but still. Still. That's a pretty darn fair point. He shouldn't be in my stuff, and I shouldn't be in his. It just wouldn't be right. It just wouldn't be fair to him. So yeah, I just, I need to walk away. I need to walk away. Be a bigger person. You can do it, Keith. But you know, to be honest, you're still really, really curious. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't really, really hurt to just look a bit, right? I mean, what kind of music does he listen to anyway? I bet it can't be that bad. I mean, not not too bad. I mean, look, look, Keith, you shouldn't be doing this. You know that. But yet you are so intrigued to know more about Lance. He's a very charismatic person. Let it go, Keith. I mean... Come on, he is, but still, that doesn't mean that we could rifle through his personal stuff. But still, there's something about him. There's something about his world, what he sees. If I could just even get a taste of that. Get a year in on what he's doing. If I can hear what his world sounds like and is to him... And maybe I'll... No, Keith. You know that this is wrong. But yet, I still want to do it. Haven't you learned anything? Curiosity kills the cat. But still. What music does Lance listen to? What music does Lance listen to? I mean, not everybody listens to the same music, but someone as charismatic as him is bound to have something. Something good, at least. I think. I don't know. My need to know is killing me, though. Yeah. And that's because curiosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kills a cat. Then again. I feel like I've come too far now. Really? You just picked up his earbuds. You can put those disgusting gross things back down on the floor. I mean, on the table where you got them from. Even though they're that disgusting. Yeah, but still. What? What? What, you're going to pretend like you're not conflicted and I don't exist here? I make a valid point, don't I? Okay. I'm just going to be comfortable about us going in this personal space. But still... Still, I, I I want to know. I need to know. Yeah, but you can ask. Wait for him to get back. Dude, there's so many other better alternatives to this. Don't be like a, a creep, a stalker, a snoop, and oh, he's going to do it. Look, I just, I need to know. I need to know. I need to know. I'll be real quick. He won't even notice. Okay? Yeah, his ear membrane will, though. Seriously. Fine, fine. Go and try it out. <sighs> you won't even notice, Keith. You won't even notice. Just put it on. How bad can it be? How bad can it be? Oh. Hey, Keith. I'm so sorry I took just a bit. I mean, well, longer than I was supposed to. You know, I just uh, got a little caught up. Uh, I saw a couple of people, you know, and I just, I, I guess I just talked to them. 
we're, we're not very off with it, but it's okay. I'm here now, and yeah, that's all that really matters, am I right? Uh, uh, um, why, Keith? Why, why would you do that? Oh, God, Keith, he has no idea, though. I mean, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. No, no. No, you should not have opened that. You shouldn't have listened. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh no, oh no, 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 <laughs> oh my god, what is he listening to? <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, he's here. Oh my god, he's gonna see me. I should not have done this. I should not have done this. I should not have done this. Oh my god, oh my god, oh, oh, oh my god, I will never unhear this thing again. I will never unhear it. Oh god, it's so crazy. What am I listening to? God, what am I listening to? Grats, I have so many absolute regrets about, 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 oh my god, about, about, about listening to this. Why did I listen to this? Why did I know? Curiosity always comes back, but yet, but yet, I, I just, I, I went, I went, and I went as a girl, and I go, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I, Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh, okay, 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 keep, 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 stop panicking, we can figure this out, but still, how do we, how do we, we can't, we can't hear these things, we can't listen to these things, it is over, my dude, it is over, 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 it's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. I don't know. Oh my gosh. You can't go back. It's not like you didn't hear it. It's not like you didn't hear it. It's not like you didn't hear it. It's done. It's done. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. You should have, you should have absolutely, I mean, absolutely, positively, never, ever, I've listened to that ever, ever. Never. You should have never. But if you never did, you would have never known. Curiosity is always going to be the main to strength and the greatest weakness. you got to choose when you're going to be cowardly and when you're not going to be cowardly at all, when you can be brave and bold. you got to choose when you're going to be curious. You're going to choose your curiosity. It's just going to break off your rip off your nose. You have to choose these things in life. I know where you're gonna go. But you can't. You can't let anybody stop you. You can't let anybody stop you. You can't let anybody stop you. Keith, you can't let anybody stop you. Keith, you can't let anybody stop you. Keith, you can't let anybody stop you. It's your head. It's your mind. 
sure this is your life regain control of it regain control of it just because one song if you've gotten to regain control of it 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 this is your own head your own thoughts your own mind you can do whatever you need to and whatever you want this is it this is it this is your mind you do what you want with it you do what you with with it you do this is your mind this is your mind man this is your mind you do what you want with it you do what you wish with it this is your mind this is no one else's mind this is no one else's mind except your 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 mind Come on, Keith. You can come out of this. I know you can. I know you can. I know you can. I know you can. Fight. 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 You. You can come out of it. You can come out of it. Oh God, what did I do? Poor Keith. <sighs> Dad, that right there is the face. It's the face of somebody who's been broken. Not just broken by anything, but shattered. Shattered by some type of surprise of sorts. It's that moment when curiosity gets the best of you. And your eyes, they, they say it all. They show it all. And it's the most scariest sight you will probably ever see. And one of the most scariest things you will probably ever and I mean ever experience in your life. It is absolutely terrifying. And most times they're traumatized. But there's no question for what reason you got surprised. His curiosity killed him. And so apparently too did others. No. Well, now we wait. We have no idea if he's going or coming back. 
We have no absolute idea of knowing that Keith will truly be okay after that. Not unless we ask him. But still, over here, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little afraid. And I have to look at that neck. I know what's coming next. I know why I should be afraid. Okay. What did I just listen to? Ask it carefully and simply, Keith. Don't try to go too far. You already feel like you're long gone lost. And ask what happened. We'll see how far this can go. Just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Just, just stop, man. Nothing, nothing will have to get hostile. Nothing. Just, just, just ask questions very calmly. And do not think about the proverbial music, maybe, that you just listened to. That you may have not have expected to be on that playlist. Just walk back. Back there, he's really look at him. Don't let anything get too hostile. Just, just, let's just look at him. Just ask the question. Just ask it simply. You were never in trouble. You never did anything wrong. Let it, let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Just let it go. 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 <laughs> okay. Just walk back. Come on, just, just let it go. 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 Just 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 let it go. Come on. Casey, come on. You can do this. Just let it go. 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 Okay? Just let it go. Just just let it go. You can do it. You can do it. Just let it go. Am I right? Just look at him. Just look at him. And that's the question so very simply of what you just heard. 
and let it go. Let go. Just let it go. 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 Lance? <laughs> Lance. What the fuck did I just listen to? <laughs> what did I listen to? What did I just listen to? What the hell did I just listen to? Lance, what the fuck did I just listen to? Lance? <laughs> Lance. 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 Lance, what did I listen to? What did I just listen to? What did I just listen to? Well, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, you definitely just, well, I mean, possibly, you know, the Heather soundtrack and definitely <laughs> Dead Girl Walking, uh, if you, uh, listened into my headphones, which, you know, well, not my headphones, my earbuds, which, <laughs> you know, you, you, you probably, you probably didn't, we could just deny the whole thing happened, because that was so really, really awkward. But you know, we we we, we don't we don't have to talk about this day ever ever again. You know, if you don't if you don't want to, I mean, I mean we can, but um, but um, but yeah, no, no, you you totally didn't listen to the Heather soundtrack, and you totally, totally did not just hear Dead Girl Walking, <laughs> which is probably one of my favorite songs from a musical. But you, you probably, you totally, you, you totally didn't hear it. <laughs> you, you have total deniability. I didn't see an earbud in your ear that was mine. So, Oh, okay, okay, Lance, stop. I mean, look, I, I understand that you're really, really freaking out right now. Freaking out is, like, literally the bare minimum of saying that, um, my, oh, my, my hands are getting sweaty and that, whew, I mean, my palms and, oh, my gosh. Seriously, 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 we don't have to talk about this. And, look, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's a little... It's a little overwhelming. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> to just to just think about this. I mean, no, he didn't totally hear my favorite song from Heather's. And no, 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 no. He didn't totally, 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 totally. Just, you know, you know how, huh? well, I, you know, 
listen to one of my favorite songs of all time and and no i totally didn't want to geeked out to it or, or whatever if if he if i still had it in my ear okay let's be honest i would it's heathers for freaking sake okay for fuck's sake it is dead girl walking who doesn't love that song it is the best song in the whole entire world duh don't lie to yourself but it's just it's awkward now he knows that like plus it was so so out of contact so he's like oh he must like you know like he could think i'm a perv or something now and he's a really nice person and i like him and i don't know it's just that this kid is he's different okay he's been starting to change me I guess slowly in some ways, but quickly in others. It's just, it's interesting. How, how do I say that I just, how do I say I love you? I know that might be a little too quick. It might be a little too fast. But. I do. I don't know why. Sometimes it just gets me all giddy inside. And what we have going on right now. It's completely platonic. It is friendship all the way. Down to its core and its roots. But still. Sometimes there will always be an inkling inside of me wondering, what if? What if he, he likes me back and I won't say, say anything about it now? But I do I have a crush on him. I like him. And it's a, it's a little weird. It's a little fast. I mean, I still like a lord. Uh, and I guess this probably makes me bisexual, but... Keith is a nice person, and I don't want to lead him on, and I, I definitely, I definitely don't, and I mean, I definitely really, really don't want to be that person who just leaves him and turns his back, especially for something that's so stupid, like, why is Heather so awkward to me? Heather's just my love, okay? Look, I like to be a theater nerd. <laughs> what is wrong with that? Nothing. And you know what? If he just assumes that I'm some type of perv or something, then that's his own problem, his own fault, you know? He hasn't asked any questions yet. And if he does ask questions, that's how you know he'll say. And if he doesn't, or if he doesn't just, like, really, really, really accept you, I'm... then you know he wasn't worth it anyway. You know what I'm saying? You know that if he truly loves you, if he truly likes you as a friend, as a person, and he wants to get better with you, then he'll stay with you. He'll stay with you. Oh, hmm, cute. So, what do you listen to? Hmm? Hmm? Do you only listen to musicals this whole entire time? Well, yeah, of course I do. Oh, 
but you only listen to musicals? Well, I listen to other things, but be honest with me. Yeah, the majority of them are musicals. Hmm. You need something more. Why would I need something more? You need a little more flavor in your life. Musicals come in R&B, indie, rock, pop, punk. I've, I've heard it pretty much all, Keith. Yeah, but you gotta hear the real, real, real deep parts of the genre. And musicals aren't the real parts of it? Well, what I mean is you need to start listening to real, real music. Not just music made for musicals. So musicals aren't musical because their music isn't real. Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, yeah, because your logic on that has been busted. Keith, music and musicals are real. Okay, okay, fine then. What I'm saying is you need to get out of your comfort zone a bit more. I mean, if you're such a deep, deep person, when you like to look for something new, a bit of a new journey with me through the trade of music. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I mean, come on. Lance, don't you think? Are you mocking me now? Well, I mean, maybe, but still. You need to listen to real music with real artists. You need to get out of your comfort zone a bit, and you are stuck in a baby swaddle right now when it comes to the music industry and world. I can show you a lot more than that. Hmm. Come on, or don't you? Just a little push out of your comfort zone. It won't be too much unless you're scared. Chicken. Chicken? I'm not chicken. Oh, you're so chicken. I can see it written all over your face right now. You're getting so defensive. I'm not a chicken. Okay, Keith? Oh, really? Huh? 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 Bok, bok. Bok, bok. Hmm? Hmm? You know what? Whatever. I would see her this right now, but... Mm -mm. Hmm? Hmm? What did you say? Nothing. You wouldn't understand. I'd see her this right now, but... Mm -mm. What is that? I don't know. Maybe if you were more cultured, you would understand. Huh. If you have to defend yourself with jokes and one-liners that I can't understand, then clearly you are chicken. And your musicals aren't real music, Lance. Come over to the good side of life. Follow me. Come on. I can show you more than you've seen before. Trust me. Honestly, Keith, give me one good reason why I shouldn't be angry at you right now or really see your face as a punchable face. Hmm? Uh, I mean, you are constantly saying that musicals are not real. And I mean, that's infuriating. Especially because musicals have to be real music because if they're not, they wouldn't be musicals. Therefore, you are logic bending and you can't really do that. I mean, philosophically, no. Philosophically speaking, either way, a musical is a musical. And what is truth is up to all of us. So yes, in fear, dict, definition, in, in technical definition, a musical is a real musical it had so real music keith why shouldn't i be angry at you right now as an actor who has been in a musical before many musicals loves musicals and loves plays as well tell me tell me one really good reason for a person who really really truly appreciates 
art. Why I shouldn't really be mad at you. Give me one good reason. I'm listening. I'm here. I'm waiting. Jeez. Okay. I'm sorry, man. You are? You are? Because you don't seem like it. Okay. No. Musicals are your music. But let me just, let me just show you. Okay? Philosophically speaking, truth is whatever we make of it. Right? Yes. That's what you said to me earlier, right? Yeah, and? Well, if the musicals are to real music in my head, that means that I have something else to offer you. And you have something else to offer me. When we talk about it and we really speak about it, musicals musicals give us all something to bond over, as well as music does. Because that's what music is. It's its own language so maybe i want to show you a different dialect or a dialect of my language that it's really our language but the sub part of our language that i live in and you want to introduce me to your sub part of it like a fandom kind of except within music yeah so if truth is what we make of it yeah, musicals are real music. I just, I haven't seen the value in it. So that's something that you can show me. Okay. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, speaking about it, everything is everything. So no matter what we do or what we say, in a way, it'll always be true. It'll always be right. Yeah. 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 And dude, I'm sorry for not saying that musicals are real music. I hope that one day you'll teach me the value of it. I will. Cool. 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 Okay, you're right. But I want to know then. What music do you think or you really see to be real to you? What is your truth? What do you find on that journey? I want to know more about you. The way that you were typing tells me that you're a deep person. I want to feel that. I want to see that. I need to know that. I've always been curious. And the same as I. And they say that curiosity kills the cat. But sometimes, a man has curiosity. It saves them. It's a saving grace that is on and off. It's a strength and a weakness. But we have to know how to make every weakness our strength. And how to keep our strength our strength. And always look for the tide of the battle to change in our favor. So what is real to you? What is your truth? What do you think is true music or real music in your heart? How do you communicate with it? Is it a genre? Is it a few select songs? Is it something with a certain type of feeling? I'm curious, Keith. Curious, Keith Cocaine, now I have to know. Well, <laughs> if you want to know, follow me. I'll take you on a journey. I promise. Follow me closely. And you can have my interpretation of the journey that I call life, and that we call life. But seen through your eyes. Interpretate my interpretation. Understand it. I'll make good. I'll make promise. 
and draw, make good on my deal. Good then, good then. Were things worked out? Yeah, we do. Hmm. Okay then, follow me. Okay. Let's start this journey. Mm-hmm. I'm ready. Take the lead. I will. And ask all the questions you like. I'll make sure of it. Good. Great. This is how we truly live life. Yeah. We learn from each other and we learn from our mistakes. That's why I always found history the best. That's why I love plays. It's cool. And one day, one day, the whole entire world will understand each other. In a way that's deeper than we do now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Attendance. Huh? Attendance. Oh. Attendance. Oh. All actors oh, will be taking attendance now. Our stage crew well, will be taking I guess attendance we'll see likewise later. with me that first, nice. and then we will check in with the director. Like attendance. Let's, let's go. Move time. it, folks. Move it, people. Attendance. One attendance. Party. 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 And I hope that he, well, I hope that he never changes, changing my life. I hope that as he changes, he keeps changing my life, every transformation. I can't wait to see where this journey will take us. <laughs> I can't wait for it. The ending is always the beginning. The beginning is always the end. This is it. This is it, Keith. This is the person you've been waiting for your whole entire life. Take it. Grasp it. Live it. Enjoy it. Breathe it. Take it all in. Take it all in, Keith. Take it all in. Take it all in. Anyway, anyway, I guess it's over. Yeah, me too. Like I said before. Anyway, my life still stands. If you want to know what my truth is, and my interpretation of life, through my music, through our music, just find me at the end of rehearsal. And should wrap up. I guarantee it, you'll love the ride. I will. Good. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. See you then, I guess. Yeah. See you then. <sighs> Prepare to be blown away. Oh, what? Am I going to lose my mind? Hey. Don't bully me.
I'm not bullying you and you know it. Oh, yeah, but the teasing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you're so cute. (laughs) Well, yeah, anyway. Hope rehearsal goes well for the both of us. Yeah, me too. If it goes well, then we can hang out after. If it doesn't, well then, you know, it goes longer. And then our parents ask for us to both be home. Yeah, and we can't miss curfew. Oh no, they kill us if we miss curfew. Oh. Yeah, honestly, my parents would too, but they don't mind as much because I'm really not the most social person. You know, I used to be pretty antisocial before I met you. Can you believe it? Oh, gasp! Had no idea. <laughs> Dude, you are so hilarious and wise and funny. Like I said before, give yourself credit for that. I will. I'll start to. Anyway, thanks. Thanks for hearing me out today. No problem. <laughs> Seriously. You're, like, one of my best friends now. And friends always got each other's back. These are one of these things that you just do, you know? You don't have to thank people. Yeah. Also, I'm really glad and happy that you showed me a bit of your world today. That I could understand it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing the world the only to size for a bit. Even the dead girl walking had their surprise. It was still interesting to see that. You know, I never saw music guess I never saw musicals as contemporary or the music in them. But it turns out they can be. If you just look on the right side, Keith. <laughs> yeah. And that I know is never really a given because going into somebody's private space and well yeah but we're close enough that I don't really mind I was slightly embarrassed that you heard Heather's and dead girl walking because yeah it can scar somebody for life that they don't know what's going on (laughs) I hope to know one day and I hope to tell and teach you well till then Dylan, thank you for letting me in your world too, Keith. Those things are never given. Yeah, I know. And no, I know what you're thinking. You're not an open book. But you're not a book with 10,000 locks either, Keith. And it's not even because we all break down sometimes. It's just... You need to give your heart a fair amount of time to one, grieve everything, and two, to let up, to let yourself open up to people. It takes time. It took me time with Pidge and Matt and Hunk. And yeah, I was younger, so it was a bit easier. Yeah, I didn't go through all that you've been through. But I still these prejudice on a daily basis even if we're in a free country you know yeah it's hard when you're beige or you're brown it's hard when your skin isn't white it's of color because even though you're a really good person People will judge you for one thing that somebody who is of the same heritage of you did. They judge your culture instantly based off of that. They don't see that your culture is not about war or fighting or being some bum on the streets. They don't see a hard your people have worked, how hard your family has worked to be free. They don't see that we've worked just as hard as them all of their lives and had to face and go through so much 
more shit than they have. Just because of them. It sucks, you know? Yeah. I feel you. Yeah. It sucks. And Keith, yeah. To be honest, yeah. As a Puerto Rican, as a Latino, yeah. It's always scary. Why? Well, let's be honest. My bias against people who have the skin color of a white person is real. I mean, I don't see you as evil. I don't see you as terrible. But still, there are always those moments in time where it's just you're taught to say on your side of the road to say on your side of the neighborhood to go to your fountain because you're always afraid that somebody who can get away with almost everything who holds that power over you may just come after you for no apparent reason other than that you just don't look right to them you don't act right to them you're not right to them and then whenever they say that your culture is a trend they jump on this thin wagon train and you know it's not really just like sometimes to be that way but in this world unfortunately that bias that bias toward people who are not of color really my ethnicity doesn't get them killed or shot in the streets for no apparent reason really we're not targets of hate crime it's unfortunate that that vice can save you sometimes because your parents have always taught you street smarts and you have to have them no matter where you are in life it's unfortunately true. Oh, racism does this to people. And it sucks that people can be like that. But I'm glad that I have good friends in life. Like you and Pidge and Hunk. People who can help me through. People who can understand, who've seen it before. Who knows how it works on the other side? It makes me thankful. Thankful to have people in my life. Thankful to not be attacked when I go to school every day. Because I know that there are other Latinos out there who do legitimately go through this stuff on a day-to-day basis. And it sucks. It sucks for everybody who has to go through it. I'm just glad that I have good friends and family in my life. People who are very understanding of not only me, but everything. My heritage, who legitimately care. People who are cultured. People who know. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to me, man. Hmm. Yeah. Even if I really haven't fully, fully experience racism on an everyday basis. It does. And I'm glad I can be part of that. I'm glad I can be part of that for you, Lance. Thanks. These are not one of the things you have to thank me for. It's a given. Just because my color is a different color than yours, the color of my skin, doesn't mean I get to treat you terrible. Doesn't mean that I get to be an asshole. Doesn't mean that anybody does. And don't you ever forget that. Even if it is somebody of your race, don't ever let yourself be treated like shit. You deserve so much more. And so much better. Get out of there. Leave. Because you're better than that, Lance. 
You're so much better. That means a lot to me, Keith. That means a lot to me. That you open up about these things. Yeah. You never have to stand alone. And neither do you. Because we're together and we're friends. And friends can become like family. Family always looks out for each other. They always protect each other. That's just life. That's just facts. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, um, I have to run because attendance, yeah, I do too. Uh, I hope I can chat with you later. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Anyway, other than that, it's a date. I'll see you after rehearsal. Ching. Okay. Okay. Peace. Gotta go. Yeah. Bye. Bye. It's a date. It's a date. We have a date. We have a date with Lance. Oh, well. <laughs> God, we got it. We got it. It's so cool. <laughs> I can't believe he's that hot. I know, right? <sighs> Despite that, I know there's a few things I learned today. M is for the M word. And M is also for moral courage. Something that Lance has, that I have, and that we're working on getting better every single day. And I love how she's my view. And on all of life.